it's Phoenix. Another week, another race where it just, you know, we get an arbitrary yellow that just kind of fudges up the entire field order. And yeah, um, this time at least the yellow was like warranted. But let, let's start from the beginning. So stage one, I didn't see any. I went out to go get food and apparently it was a pretty good business decision on my part because nothing much of note happened in stage one. And when I got back to watch stage two, really nothing to write home about. It was just the top two. And there was kind of racing throughout the field. Like, Fox kind of showed it. But <laughs> not a whole lot. It was just a very mid-average race. That, like, once in a while went, like, that little teeny tiny bit above average. And it was just it was just a race for quite a while. Um, Harvick was the most interesting element to follow throughout the whole race because he was steadily moving his way up through the field. And, like, he got to third, then he got to second, and we had, like, a green flag pit stop, and Larson's right rear tire changer went a little bit slow, and Harvick caught him, they were close, there was right, like, we had a green flag pit stop, we had things play out, Harvick got to him, and passed him, and Pole was pulling away, and had about a three second lead or something, and... With 10 to go, I'm just thinking to myself, I hate Harvick. But God damn it, what a good story this would be for his final year. To get that 61st win, to get his 10th career you know, win at this track. And just you know, just have a legendary just type of day. And he flat out earned it. He, he did what he needed to. But once again, kind of like Vegas, but with a twist. A yellow comes out with under 10 to go. And it, it, for the second week in a row... Um, they they hit that button really freaking fast. And it's just pure luck that Harrison Burton's tire started shredding to when it actually warranted a yellow. But that's not always going to be the case. There's going to be instances where they're going to press that button really quick and it's not going to be a yellow that's warranted. Because if it was just for him spinning to down to in the infield, it would have been another just good old-fashioned bullshit yell. But... His tire exploding, that saved everything. So they they got really lucky on that. So what ensued is a typical green-white checkered fashioned... Well, not really typical. Well, technically typical for Phoenix because that's literally everything. Everything matters on the start. That's like the only highlight of the track is just, oh, wow, they're going like six wide. Holy shit. But then everything else just kind of like settles out and it's just very average. I'm sorry, a restart does not make a race... At a high a high ass rating. It doesn't. It does. It's stupid. So we had a little bit of tire strats. Some people took two, some took four. And it, what ensued was just uh, like like a typical green white checkered finish where it's just it's just chaos. Everything it just the finishing order gets all jumbled up. Josh Berry gets tenth and everyone's freaking out about it. I'm sorry, him getting tenth is not impressive. He was actually around like fifteenth before all that stuff was going on, so he was actually having like a pretty you know respectable run. But no, we're just gonna like overhype him because he got a top ten after the madness of the end, so that doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It, it does not mean anything. He was just fortunate enough to not get collected in other any other shit at the end of the race. So I'm not gonna put that top ten in high regards, but he did have an average run. Like he actually did he he wasn't running like 25th to 30th like last week, but that's what happens when you give the team and cars practice that actually, you know, you can actually do something. That's a whole other tangent about how they don't give practice out as they should and it's stupid, but yeah, so I've just kind of gotten to the point where I'm just tired of all these green white checkers and just kind of, I don't know, like there was a part of me maybe like 12 years ago where I, I found it to be exciting, but maybe as like the older I got, the more I'm just like, I just want to see a race. And I just want to see a play out and just see the best guy win. Not the person that was running like fourth. Just get fortunate enough to kind of get circumstances play right and, and win. So, again, that's twice now Byron's gotten pretty lucky with wins. So, I don't really hold these much in, in, pretty, in, in, in any real regard. And I have no real stake in the matter. I don't really love or hate Byron. Well, actually, I kind of hate Byron. He kind of did stupid shit on iRacing. <laughs> and was like a, like a dick to people. So, okay, maybe I did have a little more b bias. But fanboy, or I guess hatred cap off. It's not really impressive wins that makes me get hyped. Because if he was just... It would be a whole different scenario if he got those two wins. Well, actually... Well, he actually had the best card, Vegas. But Larson kind of just got in front of him. It was just... 
I'm just tired of these like, just late race yellows. And them just throwing the, the caution thing like way too quick. Very, very fast before... Ugh, it's just tiring. It's just it's, it's it's just old to see it. And I don't know, maybe it just maybe I just like the fact that, you know, a race just plays out. Like it was gonna be just like a five out of ten race. But then with the whole whole ending thing, it just uh it knocks it down to four point five. It just I'm sorry, a green well maybe a four point five. I don't know. <sighs> don't know. I'm sorry, like, two laps doesn't save a, gr a good race. This is like 2016 all over again, where that was the only memorable thing was the finish with Edwards and Harvick. That was it. Nothing else was memorable except for the finish. It's sort of like this, but not as legendary because it wasn't a side-by-side. -side, but it's just... I'm tired of it. It's not really... It's just old. Um, the booth was insufferable as usual. Danica offers nothing to the booth, and shit, more stuff came out about Danica that... Um, Basically, Tony Erie gave her, like, a sim rig and, like, iRacing stuff for, like, setups to get her to be better. And she said it collected dust. So, that pretty much tells us she didn't even bother to better herself as a driver. Like, she made no attempt. So, one, why would you announce that on public TV? I don't think that was in this cup race. I think it might have been in practice or something. I don't know. But, that's ridiculous. Um, Danica continues to embarrass herself on a weekly basis. So, thank God she's out of the booth for the remainder of the year, I hope. So that's embarrassing. And she just continues to be just the uh, empath of uh, just doing the bare minimum to be successful. So that's really fucking depressing to hear. Um, kind of already like had theories that she didn't really bother to try in the cup. Hence the t uh, one of the all-star all races where um, she had to get like she had to win the fan vote. And she made like no attempt to like promote herself or like do anything. Yet the Vendetta was doing all this type of like videos on Twitter and really trying to like push himself out there and Danica like made no attempt because she just kind of expected people to vote for her and it didn't happen to Ben Dedo meaning which was kind of funny but yeah that's a whole other tangent but yeah and then uh Mike Joy just shits on the on the fans for calling them keyboard warriors for bringing up like legitimate criticism about the broadcast and the commercials which is pretty goddamn disgusting um I'm kind of fed up with Mike Joy and his bullshit not gonna lie I'm kind of tired of it um because like, that shit right there is why I don't watch it on cable anymore. I watch it on, like, live streams. Because why would I give them my view if they're going to be talking to the viewer, a.k.a. me, like, shit? <laughs> why? Why would you do that? So, I don't know. Mike Joy's just lost it. He's lost his fucking marbles, apparently. Which is very upsetting and disappointing because he's a... He's a legend. I mean, he's been around forever and he's done... His contributions are massive. But it's it's just time. It's time to go if you're gonna start, you know, shitting on the people watching the product, and and shitting on people that actually gave like fair criticism and calling them keyboard warriors and insult, insulting them and talking down. Like, it's just gross. It's just really, really freaking gross and disgusting. And he's done this stuff on Twitter before. I'm talking like his attitude. I don't know what. I maybe he's just fed up of dealing with this, but I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of this garbage product it just does it's just disgusting and it makes me not even i'm glad i don't watch it on cable anymore like i said i, I think i stopped maybe like 2020 and i'm glad i have have had you know haven't done that because it they don't deserve my viewership if they're going to be doing shit like especially after this that's just gross so yeah um just a very average race I mean, it was very average for a long time. It might have been elevated to a 5.5 or maybe just a 5, but the ending knocks it down a peg to uh, probably the worst race of the year, to, at least for me. Um, whatever they did to this package, it's slightly better than it was last time, but it's definitely not by much. They're talking about how it's so, um, like, I don't know. There's, there's so little downforce to the car compared to what it was before. And it's like, this is lower they had since the 90s. And it's like, that's probably true. I mean, even if it is true, the biggest thing is they don't have the horsepower. So, you know, it doesn't... And it seems like it took so long for tire wear to become a thing. It's just like 50 plus laps into a run, maybe. And yeah, just tire degradation didn't seem to be... It would definitely seem to be a thing, but it took a long time for that to happen. And just, there was passing, but I guess it's a step up from what we saw in the the fall race. 
but it's not really by much. I guess we'll see what it can really do at Martinsville and Bristol, but I don't or Richmond, but I don't really have high hopes because it doesn't help too that Phoenix is just a mid track and and it's also really depressing that this is our season finale, and there's literally like every reason in the world that they go to there like to that track except for the racing. It's all bull, all political bullshit and sponsorship things, so that's just depressing. It's kind of like what IndyCar did when they went to Sonoma. It was like it was like all for like other things other than the actual like the actual race product. It was for like some other I don't know. It's just it's, it reminds me of that a little bit. I heard about that story. So I don't know. It's just a very just an average race, middle of the road. Um, broadcast insulted the, the viewer, treating them like shit. So that's wonderful. Yeah, treat treat the viewers like crap when you're watching the pro. Like, what? It's ridiculous. It's just it's gross. I'm just tired of it. Um. There was stuff on Twitter with uh, uh, the time when Dale Jr. was in the booth for Talladega, and then they compared it to like the five hundred. Like clearly, Dale Jr. actually has emotion and like cares, and just seems to I don't know. Like I mean, sometimes the the the, the, the yelling might be a little excessive, but gee, I'll take just um, I'll I'll take I'll take a little more excitement any freaking day. They seem to try to do that in the booth today, to be fair, but I. Just a very average middle of the road race. Nothing that stood out to me as impressive. Um, the finish was going to be something worth noting or a good storyline. I mean, they literally had a, a good story gift wrapped at them with Harvick leading, but it just, of course, didn't happen. And at least the yellow made sense, but again, they threw the yellow so incredibly quick. Because, yeah, just. They were just so desperate to find an excuse for yellow. And not have a race play out like organically. I don't know. That's just uh and we go to Atlanta, so that's gonna be another shit show uh, embarrassing track that helped make Kurt get more, you know, fucking concussed because Chase LA thought it was a great idea to block everyone in his in the car that wasn't totally safe and that just attributed to Kurt's downfall. So that's people wonder why I'm salty about that. Yeah, I wonder fucking why. All of twenty two, every little instant, all that stuff added up. Ooh, I'm done. Uh, I'm gonna give it a 4.5, slightly below average. Probably could have been an average one, but no, the finish kind of messed it up. I'm sorry. Two laps does not save a race. I mean, it was like interesting, but I it's just that doesn't save a race. Two laps does is not a race. Not a, the, and the results will definitely paint the picture of how everything was going beforehand. So it's just whatever. It's just depressing that we're going to this as a season finale. Is this even a rant? I don't even know. But I'm I'm done. Oh, another weekly race where I'm just disappointed, so that's fun. Maybe someday we'll have a race as good as Auto Club again, who knows. But I'm done. Take care.